hey, I'm Flynn, I'm from Australia, and during the residency, I worked on a game called ZK Hunt, which is an exploration of different ZK game mechanics and information asymmetry. But before I get into that, let's kind of zoom out, zoom out for a second. So I personally believe that autonomous worlds have definitive value. That's why I'm here at the residency, and I'm sure many of you also agree that's why you're here tonight. Uh, but there are some affordances that we take for granted in traditional games and digital worlds that we lose when building autonomous worlds due to the inherently public nature of the blockchain. And so my overarching goal is to try and claw back some of those affordances with the help of some crazy cryptographic primitives. So what kind of affordances am I talking about? Well, the ones I'll focus on tonight revolve around private state and information asymmetry. You can think of the fog of war, or the grass in, in League of Legends, or how about just a wall that occludes your vision so you can't see around the corner, or how about just the ability to sneak up on someone from behind. These mechanics, these simple mechanics are trivial to implement uh, when you have a single server that stores all the private state and determines what players can and cannot see, but on a blockchain, they're actually kind of difficult to achieve. So with ZK Hunt, that's exactly what I set out to do. And let's jump right in. So this is ZK Hunt. Uh, the first thing you say is this is built on top of MUD, which is the on-chain game engine built by the guys at Lattice. MUD is excellent. Everyone should check it out. Uh, we see here we have two players. On the left, we have player A, who controls this unit, highlighted in white. And on the right, we have player B that controls three different units. Uh, we can see each player can see the other player's units as well, you know, colored in red to show that they're enemies. OK, so in this world, we have two types of tiles. We have plains tiles shown with grass, and we have jungle tiles shown with trees. Uh, movement through the planes is public, and so each move is a transaction that submits your new position to the contract, which verifies that it was a correct move. Um, and that also means that every other player can see exactly where you are in the planes. If you enter the jungle, now you also submit a commitment to your position, which is just the hash of your position and some secret nonce. And now, when you move from one jungle tile to another, you don't submit your new position, you just submit a commitment to your position, which means that other players don't know which tile you moved into. Um, you can see this on the left, shown by the, uh, the question marks. From player A's perspective, they know you made some move in the jungle, but they don't know which of these tiles you are actually in. As we continue to move through the jungle, then that ambiguity spreads out in a flood-filled fashion uh, and continues to do so as we move through the jungle. As we exit onto the plains, then you're back out into the open, you reveal your position, and that ambiguity collapses. Woo! Hey, excellent, nice. Live demos, yeah, everyone loves live demos. Okay, so let's, let's like solidify exactly what's going on here, just to recap. So we have your, your private position and your secret nonce, and that results in some public commitment. Now, you wanna make a move, so you create a new position and new secret nonce, and the resulting commitment for that. You then take all of these and feed them into a zero-knowledge proof that validates that the move was a correct move, and then you can provide that proof to the contract, which verifies the proof and updates the on-chain commitment from the old commitment to the new one. Okay, so one way I've started to think about this is as a state machine, in fact, a private state machine. In ZK Hunt, I use this to represent the private position, but really, you can use this to represent any kind of private state with arbitrary state transition logic. You can think of health or action points, your inventory, or really state that private state that's kind of beyond the context of just games. Cool, okay, so let's jump back to ZK Hunt, and well, so now we have some, uh, we have some private state, we have some information asymmetry. How do we interact with a player in the jungle? How do we interact with their private state? Well, for that, we have the spear. And to showcase this, I'll bring in a third player, which is player C. Oh, wow, look at this. Nice. Yes. That's pretty good. Cool. So this is player C, and they're just a third-party observer that controls no units. They're just here to show. So we have the spear. And the spear, as you can see, is a linear set of four hit tiles that extends out from the player, which we can aim in any direction. Uh, if we throw the spear at another player in the planes, as you'd expect, they get hit, they're killed, and they, they drop their loot. OK, so what happens if we throw the spear at a player in the jungle? Well, we actually don't know exactly where they are, so the best we can do is guess. Uh, let's guess that they're, they're here. OK, so we've missed them. Uh, they didn't take any hit, and the ambiguity of their position is maintained. Let's try again, except this time we're a bit luckier. We've got some god vision going on here. Um, and we hit them, and they died, and they dropped their loot. But wait a second. How does player A know if they hit player B or not if they don't even know player B's position, and neither does the contract? The answer to that is that we force them to reveal whether they were hit or not. Let's rewind. When they enter the game, each player puts down a deposit in order to play. 
if they're killed during the game, then they drop a small amount of this deposit for loot so that other players can pick it up. But during the game, we can use the presence of this deposit and the threat of slashing to ensure that they follow the game rules. It's not a cryptographic guarantee, it's a financial guarantee. Okay, so back to the spear. When player A throws a spear into the jungle, they place a potential hit on player B. Player B has three options. One, they weren't hit, in which case they can generate a zero knowledge proof showing that fact, submit it to the contract, and in doing so, maintain the privacy of their position. That's what you saw the first time around. Two, they were hit, in which case they can't generate such a proof, and so they publish their position, take the hit, and die. That's what you saw the second time around. Option three, though, is that they were hit, so they can't generate the proof, but they just don't respond at all. Attached to the potential hit is a finite response period, and if player B doesn't respond within that time, then their entire deposit is slashed and they're killed anyway. The rules of the game are enforced. Cool, okay, so this is kind of cool. Um, I like to think of the spear as a method for forced information reveal, and the presence of a slashable deposit is kind of creating like forced interactivity. Um, you can kind of think of this as allowing player A to interact directly with player B's private state. And of course, this generalizes to any kind of private state. Uh, one thing to note here, though, is that this is public player discovery. Why? Well, because when player B revealed their position, it was revealed to everyone. Both player A and player C saw exactly where they were. OK, but what if we want to do a little bit better? Can we, can we do better than that? Can we do private player discovery? I think we can. Enter the search. So this is what the search looks like. Again, it's another linear set of four hit tiles, or in this case, challenge tiles. Um, but it's not a combat ability, it's an information gathering one. So let's try it out. Let's search for player B. And again, this time we're unlucky, so we've missed them. We don't learn anything. Uh, let's try again. We search. This time we were lucky, and their position is revealed. Okay, so this is the same thing you just saw with a spear. But if you look down at player C, they haven't learned of player B's position. In fact, not only do they not know their position, player C doesn't know whether player A was successful in their search or not. This is private player discovery. This is private information reveal. OK, so how does this work? Well, there's a fair amount of complexity behind the scenes, but at a high level, player B encrypts their position such that only player A can decrypt it. They then submit this to the contract alongside a proof that the encryption was done correctly. Cool, OK, so this is kind of nice. Um, what happens, though, if we do a search from within the jungle. So let's bring player B out and then back in to get some ambiguity. And let's bring player A into the jungle so they also have some ambiguity. OK, so they both have some ambiguity in place. He doesn't know where either of them are. This time, player A is going to do another search. And this time, they're actually going to be lucky on the first try. Again, we see that player B has their position revealed to player A. But if you look down at player C, they have learned almost nothing. They don't know player A's position, player B's position, what the set of challenge tiles were, or whether the search was successful or not. In fact, player C knows that player A submitted a challenge and that player B submitted a response, but they actually cannot create a definitive link between the two. This is maximally private player interaction. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty similar to the search, except in this case, both the challenge and the response are encrypted, such that only player A and player B can interpret the communication. Uh, with some nullifier stuff mixed in, uh, come find me in the break if you're interested in the full details. Cool, okay, so to summarize, we have public reads, that's the spear. We have private reads, that's the search. And we have private reads with private params, where the params are the nature of the read query and whose private state you're actually reading from. That's the search from within the jungle. So this is a set of reads, and although I didn't do anything like this in ZK Hunt, you can very easily extend this set of ideas to encompass rights to private state as well, where you place a challenge, and instead of the challenged player responding with information, they respond by updating their private state based on the nature of the right. In fact, I think the best way to think about this system is that it effectively turns players into smart contracts with private state that you can read from and write to asynchronously with a challenge response. But the full exploration of that idea, I think, is a story for another day. So, that's ZK Hunt. What's next? Well, I want to do a long form technical write up of ZK Hunt, going into all the details that I kind of glossed over tonight. I want to continue building these kinds of constructions. I think there's a lot of potential to be explored here. And I want to find good generalizations for these constructions and put them into a library. Something like WizKit, maybe. So, 
to sum up, uh, I want to say a massive thank you to the people at Lattice and, and Xerox Park for allowing me to come to the residency. And thank you all for listening. Woo!